Good morning guys and welcome back to Lebanon. We are on the way to Kadisha Valley this morning. Just stopped off at this viewpoint and look at that. <laughs> That's incredible. This is the beginning of the Kadisha Valley. We're going to be spending the whole day here hiking, going to Bashari, the cities of the gods, checking out the monasteries, and we have our guide Aline with us, same from the last video, to show us all of it. Today is going to be a good day. At this level, the valley is divided into two parts. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Wow. wow. And we're going to hike on, uh, on the other side of the valley. Visit on one side and hike on the other side. I think uh, you can have a clear idea about uh, Kadisha Valley. Kadisha means the holy valley. Uh, originally, the word is Aramean. What do we mean by uh, monastic complex? means we have the beginning we had cells for hermits then after a community start to grow around the, 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 the hermitage okay and we have a church we have a uh, sanctuary we have a monastery and start to grow and grow and grow and grow and be uh, as a uh, as a destination for pilgrims okay first up we are at San Antoine Kozayat monastery and I'm gonna try my best with the pronunciation but I'm sure it's not exactly right interesting this is a big place to see in Kadisha Valley I've just been told and what's really interesting is you see this little kind of orange beige camouflage house built into the rocks that's where the hermits used to live to disconnect from everyone else and be have a direct communication with God without any outside interference and in the past there were lots of persecution of different peoples in these lands so what they did is they built houses that look like they could be the rock camouflage into the rock just to go and live here and then not be able to be found and just have more of a quiet life a religious life without any outside interference and that's the first thing i've learned about this place that i found very interesting the other thing is that it's incredibly beautiful. I had no idea that this whole valley existed even before getting here about a week and a half ago. So these are the first cedar trees we've seen today, which is also the national tree and the symbol of Lebanon, and it's even on the Lebanese flag. But we're going to be seeing a lot more later today. They're famous for this area, and there's a site we're definitely going to see where there will be a lot of cedar trees. So we're now inside one of the grottos and this mountain, this whole valley will be full of them. I just learned that, you know, a long, long time ago, so anciently, they don't do this anymore. Uh, people used to bring mentally ill people here, their family or whatever, because they believed they were possessed by demons and then they would be tied up by chains in this cave and then exercise and the demons would hopefully leave them and they wouldn't be mentally ill anymore. Obviously that's not anything that happens anytime recently but quite an interesting and sad part of history that that happened here. Why, why I'm saying the word persecution all the time because several persecution took place in Lebanon. Uh, no, before the Byzantine uh, uh, there is the mono monophysist. So monophysist, those who believed in, in one nature of Jesus Christ. I know it's complicated, okay? <laughs> it's um, uh, Jesus as a human with, uh, with uh, divine uh, attribute, okay? The Maronite, they were loyal defender of double nature of Jesus Christ. He's a divine and the nature that is divine and another nature that is human, okay? Don't ask more than that. I won't be able to answer this <laughs> question. Also here is the oldest printing press in the Middle East from the 16th century. And the reason it's here in the monastery is because Christians at the time and for a hundred, few hundred years since weren't able to join the army or fight in the military here, but they were, did have their only weapon as education. So they were able to educate people. And that apparently has passed through the generations of people here placing the importance on education. And I think I could see that around 
Lebanon as well. We've all been commenting for the past week on how educated, how well spoken, how many languages everyone speaks here. And maybe it even partly stems from that because everyone here has Arabic, French, English, and then the old Christians or the Maronites here used to always be able to speak like five to ten languages and would be the old translators here because they had such a high level of education. Very interesting to see. We're now beginning our hike through Kadisha Valley and it's a, it's a relatively short one we've been told, maybe an hour and a half, two hours, but we, we wanted to try pack in a lot today. You could also, this is there's a thing here called the Lebanese Mountain Trail that connects the north to the south and goes right through Lebanon and this is part of it. So you can actually do much longer hikes and you could do that here if you come back and hike the full day, stay overnight, which would be a great way of doing it. We're trying to get a few things in so we're just doing a two hour hike but it is also one of the most scenic ones. So uh, just uh, remember yesterday is the same map we saw at the castle uh, yeah. Tripoli. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are here. Mm -hmm. Okay so this is the northern part of the valley one branch of the valley Kushaya. We visited the monastery of Saint Antoine. Now from down from from Hauka we'll go down to visit uh, to see one monastery and visit two sites. Okay so <laughs> like uh, you will be able to see the both sides of the valley. I hurt my knee just sitting on the bus yesterday. <laughs> Is that a sign I'm getting older? <laughs> <laughs> This is beautiful, by the way, <laughs> first of all. Second of all, this second mo monastery here is completely hidden. So from where we were at the first monastery, you wouldn't be able to see this. And even when you're up close, if I was just hiking here, I wouldn't even be aware that it is a monastery. It's completely built into the rock as another way of them hiding from the persecutions, but also having access to fresh water from the grotto and in a beautiful location like this. You can imagine how they would feel quite close to God being somewhere like this. She has a great shirt for today, by the way. Yeah. With the contrast. Yeah. And just FYI, we didn't intentionally wear his and hers Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> that was coincidence. <laughs> so this hermitage is actually where a hermit lived up until last year. It was, he came from Colombia and then actually came to become a Lebanese hermit and carried on that tradition and lived here in the mountains completely you know, out of touch from everything else. And you used to be able to, up until a year ago where he stopped because of bad health, but you used to be able to come and talk to him and ask him questions and he would like impart why he's doing it. Yeah, very interesting that's still continued. But I say, unfortunately, he is in bad health now, so he's living back at the monastery where he can have better care. But that's one of the main things Aline has made clear here, that literally everywhere along this valley, you can see caves and grottos that would open up inside and old monasteries where people used to live. So there's terraces all the way along where people used to cultivate their food and it's not practiced as much anymore, but people used to live throughout these hills and in solitude. So this is Kadisha village and it's now abandoned, has been for about 10 years, but our guide Aline was just saying that it would be a great spot for people to come and stay in guest houses while hiking maybe along the Lebanese mountain trail, coming to visit this area and then you could stay in the original Kadisha village. And there's kind of a little bit of re renovation going on, you can sort of see it right now. The old terraces are being cleaned up, it looks like there's something going on so who knows, maybe that's the plan, maybe by the time you come here then you'll get to stay in Kadisha village. I know for us if that was an option then we definitely would have done that if we were staying on like a multi-day hike and we could stay here in this epic scenery in like a local guest house like you can do in other places I've been hiking then I'd definitely do that. 
The last people who lived here are the grandparents of some families that they stayed in the valley. And uh, usually uh, like the Red Cross or Caritas used to come and visit those people uh, in the summer and in the winter to see if they need anything or need any, any medical uh, support. Uh, uh, but now it's almost empty. There is a church in the middle. You can, you can only, the access is only by donkeys. Sometimes you hear the, you hear okay. the, the donkey because they, still some people, they come and go to those houses. We're at the final church now the final stop before we head for lunch and interestingly there is a patriarch there that became a hermit so left all of his royalty and became a hermit and that's why he's been preserved like that they found him in a cave I think the guy died in like 1820 so a long time ago or well, 1800s anyway and they found him like that it's been very well preserved and now it's, he's on display Crazy the detail you can still see. But that's it for this little section. Beautiful hike, um, absolutely great start. And now we've organized a full spread of a Lebanese lunch. So now we have a full Lebanese spread for roughly $15 each and we, we get all of this to enjoy. <laughs> We've got some raw meat here, and apparently Iraq is especially good for digesting raw meat. All right, so I've got my no, little serious. bit of raw goat here. I'm gonna dip it in a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. I'm sure I'm not gonna do that, I know, but if, if that's what we're using it for, it's all right. Um, it's pretty good, to be honest. Mm. Mm. Salty raw meat. <laughs> what else do I expect? <laughs> oh, I don't think that's anything special. It's literally just fat. Mm. I'm not gonna eat that. That's so bad. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. Sorry. You've got to gotta try it. But I like... draw the line at things that are going to send me into cardiac arrest. <laughs> <laughs> not including that chocolate pizza we had yesterday. <laughs> it's not bad by any means. They sell this in Greg's in England for sure, but <laughs> my least favorite so far. Another glorious lunch. And now we're finished and ready to head into the Cedars of the Gods. We actually need to get a different transfer from here. So we've got this kind of four by four and we're gonna jump on the back in the pickup and yeah, let's go. Yalla. Oh, you're very cute. Yeah. Oh, you buddy. There you go. <laughs> I genuinely we're having to duck down quite a few times because it's just like leaves going past or branches. We are now at the cedar trees here, the famous ones that is the oldest cedar forest in all of Lebanon. And to give you a perspective of just how old, some of these trees will be 3,000 plus years old. They said they could be up to 5,000, but they're not really sure. So 3,000 is a safe bet, which is mind blowing in itself. I also just found out that all of this, you can go skiing up until about three weeks ago, and that's mid-April. So like, you can come skiing here until mid-April, and then an hour's drive away, you could be at the beach going for a swim, which is also another very cool reason that I'll have to come back to do that. But right now, first of all, before I do that, we're going into the Cedars. Thank you. Okay, so this yeah. one is the best, I guess? Yeah. Thank you. So a lot of the cedars were also deforested and even going back to the Phoenicians they destroyed a lot of the trees and because they take thousands of years to grow it hasn't really recovered even though that was a long time ago where a lot of them were chopped down and sold on. So now there's a massive project to try and reforest, get people to even adopt the cedar trees and try and rebuild up this whole forest of cedars. So also in that vein this place is run by donations. As you're going in you just give a donation of whatever you feel is appropriate and that'll go towards helping the cedars to grow. 
because if you can imagine they take they could be up to 5,000 years old so even when they're two or three years old they're only tiny like maybe 20 centimeters tall that's a, that's a guess but they're tiny so anything could just come along and eat it and it has to be protected at all times otherwise it will be gone years of growth gone in like two seconds <laughs> this cedar fell about three years ago and even when it does they just leave it here because it helps the ecosystem for it to decompose here if they don't take any of it out. So it's uh, the theme is about the crucifixion okay so you can see many faces of Jesus Christ and the one on top there is the crucifixion with the nail in the back Okay, yeah. so it's he, it is a local uh, a local uh, sculptor. His name is Zerudi Rahmi, who did this work. So this is the size of it. Doesn't even fit in the frame. <laughs> <laughs> so this could be over 5,000 years old. Our guide said she's not really sure, that's what she's been told from other people, but 3,000 plus, so any, anywhere older than 3,000 years. So think about the things it's seen and what's happened in the lifetime of this tree. We are just about to leave now, and we've got snow right here, and then just an hour's drive, and now we're in the sun. How you doing? <laughs> I don't want to go home. <laughs> so we came down from the mountains, went out last night, and now we're staying at this villa in Batroon, next to the sea. That's one of the coolest things about this place, that you can go like one hour from snow to the sea. And that is it for this video. So that was cool to finish on. Really interesting history as well. So thanks to Aline, our guide. All the guides here have been fantastic and I do recommend it in certain places. If you can go and get a guide, then you can learn about the real history of a country. And I think for Lebanon, that's important to really understand or try to understand because a lot of stuff has happened here and there's always been different conflicts and there's a lot to learn about. I'm going to finish it here and just say again thank you for watching, we're heading back to Beirut in a moment and I'll probably do another video from there but for now thanks for watching and see you in the next one.